Hi there everyone. Um, in this video I'd like to show you a new functionality that has been added in version 2.0.8 uh, which allows you to work with 2D sprites. Yeah, so starting with uh, with this version you can now uh, use the tool to build uh, 2D game levels using uh, using sprites. And uh, you have access to all the placement tools, uh, object selection, object erasing, snapping and even mirroring um, when uh, when working with uh, with sprites. So um, the first thing that you would like to do when working with uh, with sprite objects is to uh, make sure that the grid is aligned with the XY plane. So you can do that by uh, setting the X rotation field of the grid to 270 and that will align the, the grid plane to the XY plane. Um, yeah, and then you can, uh, you can just, you know, paint sprites. Right now I'm using the decor paint mode which means that I can uh, place uh, sprites on the grid and I can, uh, you know, paint them like this. Um, you can also use the brush mode to paint multiple sprites at once. Uh, currently I only have two sprites here and uh, yeah, I can do something like this. Uh, be careful when you're working with 2D sprites, the, uh, whenever you have to specify an, axis, an, an alignment axis, uh, you have to specify the positive look because, uh, or the negative look, uh, because that will ensure that the sprites are, uh, you know, they, they sit flat on the on the plane. Otherwise, you might get, uh, you know, incorrect, incorrect results such, such as these. Yeah. Uh, so just make sure that you have the positive look axis set there, and this also uh, applies to the single decor paint mode. If you have the align axis button checked, make sure that it's set to positive look. Okay, uh, you can also work with uh, snapping. So you can use the pivot point uh, snapping mechanism to snap sprites to the grid. Uh, and you can also use the object to object snapping to snap to adjacent sprites. Yeah, like this. And you can even uh, you can even combine 3D objects with uh, 2D sprites. So right now I'm gonna place a cube right here. Uh, I can snap the cube to the sprites, and again, if I uh, if if I activate the sprite, I can snap the sprite to the cube, like this. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a really flexible me mechanism. Uh, you can also use the path placement mode to build uh, roads and fences and uh, similar structures. Yeah, something like this. Um, when you're working with the path and the block placement modes, uh, these these structures cannot be raised or lowered when using sprites because uh, sprites have a zero size along the the grow axis. Yeah, so it, this is not possible, and it doesn't really make too much sense anyway in in 2D because you're working the X Y plane, and you don't you know you don't really need that kind of functionality. Um, when working in path placement mode, you probably already know that you can use tile connections and tile connections uh, starting with this version also work with 2D sprites. And I have here some sprites uh, that I use for each tile connection. Uh, they're not, the, the sprites themselves are not really meaningful uh, in this case uh, for, each, for each tile, but um, you know, I'm just using something that uh, for, for the purposes of the demonstration. So let me just show you a quick example something like this yeah so we, we can see that we have the asteroid set as the begin we have the ball sprite set as the end tile the forward uh, the forward tile is set to the wheel sprite then we have turn here 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 uh, we have t, the, the t junction right here cross uh, yeah here and uh, we also have the auto field tile set to the cube. Yeah. Um, if you've worked with tile connections before in, in Octave, uh, you probably already know that um, all the tiles have to have the same size. Yeah. So um, that means that, uh, and, and the size has to be square. So for example, um, uh, the, uh, the, the tool will use the, the begin tile as a reference. And if the begin tile has a size of uh, three by three, uh, then all the other tiles will be scaled so that they have the same size. Uh, more than that, if the begin tile has a size of, well, let's say, 3 by 4, uh, then the tool will actually use the average uh, of these two values. Yeah, so uh, in this case, it's going to be 3.5. Uh, so just uh, just keep that in mind. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the idea is that you have to, you have to use uh, sprites that, are, um, that, that have uh, the exact same square size. Um, 
Okay, uh, and you can also use the block placement mode to place, um, you know, uh, for, for mass placement like this. And again, as I said before, you cannot raise or lower the block because the sprites have a zero size along the along the uh, um, sorry um, along the uh, grow axis. Okay, uh, you can you can select sprites. Uh, using the uh, selection mechanism, uh, one thing to one thing to watch out for here. Uh, let me use another sprite. I'm going to use these bomb sprites to show you what I mean. So uh, when you click on a sprite in order to select it, the system will ignore uh, transparent pixels if the sprite texture has been um, if if the sprite texture has the read write enabled flag. So in this case, uh, the bomb sprite has the read write enabled flag set here, which means that the tool can actually, you know, read the pixel data and uh, check if you've actually clicked on a transparent pixel. But if, if that flag is not checked, then um, clicking on transparent areas will actually select the sprite. Uh, this is this is something that is, you know, sometimes undesirable, but it's a limitation that I, for the moment, I really can't find a way around. So just keep this in mind when uh, when selecting uh, when selecting sprites, and you can also use the um, erase tools, yeah? all the erase tools that you have at your uh, disposal, um, and a couple of uh, other things that you should know is we have if you scroll down here in the prefab management window, if you scroll down in the to the active prefab view, you have two values that can be associated with each prefab offset from grid surface and offset from uh, from object surface so let's just talk about uh, they pretty much the, they pretty much mean the same thing but they apply to different situations so the offset from grid surface is allows you to specify um, an offset value for uh, for each prefab so for example if i specify a value of minus 10 here um, that that sprite is going to be placed uh, minus 10 units away from the grid. Yeah, something like this. And this is uh, this is useful when you're when you would like to separate uh, background objects from from uh, foreground objects. Yeah. Uh, of course, you you have to um, you know in, or, in order to achieve uh, the desired uh, sorting uh, depth sorting, you will have to specify the um, uh, the order. Um, the, the, the sorting layer and the order uh, in, inside the layer separately uh, from using the, you know using the unity standard interface um, okay and the offset from object surface uh, pretty much means the same thing but it applies when uh, you are hovering a uh, you know another object yes yeah, so for example this uh, this cube right here let me just set a value of five uh, if I'm hovering this cube then the sprite will be placed five units away from the cube yeah of course, uh, normally um, you probably you're probably not gonna mix uh, 3D objects with 2D objects, but uh, you know, in, in case you need you need to do that, uh, you can uh, you can play around with these values and uh, you know use them as you as you see fit. Uh, one last thing that I would like to to talk about is changing the sprite uh, pivot points. So let's just say that I would like to change the pivot point for this asteroid sprite. From uh, top left to center, and then hit apply. Um, you can see that the position changes. Um, this is something that Unity does automatically, so I have no control over this. But there is something else that you need to do in order to interact with these sprites correctly. Um, you will have to press the refresh scene button right here. Yeah. So after you change the pivot point of a sprite, make sure that you press the refresh scene button, and that will uh, rebuild the internal. Uh, object representation that the tool uses to allow you to interact with those objects accordingly um, okay that's uh, that's it guys thanks for watching bye bye